Hey, what's up, guys? So we're back here with another video today talking about optimization for NVIDIA-specific users. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card, today we're going to be getting into the nitty-gritty about how to squeeze the most out of that graphics card that you have. If you are an AMD boy, I do plan on making another separate follow-up video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. But for now, let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I just did want to apologize about the lack of uploads. I actually was in hospital due to some heart issues, guys, but I am getting better slowly. I would like to say a massive shout out to everyone on Twitter and also Discord that reached out to ask if I'm okay and all the support that I got from the community was crazy and just reminds me why I love the Tarkov community so much. You guys are amazing, so thank you so much for all of that. All right, so the first thing you want to do is find your way towards the desktop and if you are a NVIDIA user, right click and then go to NVIDIA control panel. Now this next part here is depending on whether you've done this before. If you've done this before, you don't need to worry. But one of the first things that you're going to need to do is go on the left hand side here towards manage 3D settings and you're going to have two options. One says global settings and the other one says program settings. You're going to click on program. Now you're going to have a drop down here, which should hopefully have Tarkov in it. If it's not in this drop down list, you might want to run Tarkov in the background and then go ahead and hit add. You're going to look for it and look for escape from Tarkov.exe. It cannot be the BSG launcher or any other sort of executable. You need to find escape from Tarkov.exe. Now, if you're having a hard time trying to find the escape from Tarkov.exe, all you need to do is type BSG into your Windows search bar and then go right click open file location on the Battlestate Games launcher. As soon as you get to here, you want to do it again and then right click open file location and it should take you to your actual Tarkov folder. From here, you can back it up and you can see this is my Battlestate Games launcher. We've also got another folder here called BSG. You're going to have two folders. One says BSG launcher, the other one says EFT. And generally either EFT or in brackets EFT live is the folder that you're looking for. And we're going to be finding it here. This is the escape from Tarkov executable. This is the one that we're going to be looking for here today. So he's going to add that, add selected program like this. Should be pretty easy. And once it's the one that we've selected, now we can get into some of the changes. So I'm not going to go through what absolutely every setting does just to save yourself and all the absolute brain mush of me going on for hours about all these different settings. We're just going to be showing you what you need to change these to for now. If you want to do a lot more research into it, there's plenty of little descriptions that you can follow along here and learn for yourself about what each one does. And maybe some of these are specific based on the one that you use. So let's start off with anisotropic filtering. Now, this is one that is really good and in Escape from Tarkov, I recommend having it on per texture. If you haven't seen my Escape from Tarkov settings guide that I released recently, I'm going to link that up in the corner there. So go and watch that one. But we talk about per texture filtering. So don't worry about this. We're going to leave this on application controlled. Now for the next one, anti-aliasing FXAA, I'm going to turn this off. Then for the next one, anti-aliasing gamma correction, we're going to go ahead and turn this one off. Once we're here at anti-aliasing mode, we're also going to leave this one on application controlled. So what this means is we're basically going to allow Tarkov to choose the one that we need, whether that's TAA high or TAA, or for some of you out there with lower end rigs, FXAA, like we've talked about in some of our other videos. For this next setting here, we have anti-aliasing transparency. We're going to go ahead and put this on multi-sample, and then we're going to bring our way down towards background application maximum frame rate. Now we don't need to be worried about this, but if this is something that you're worried about when you're alt tabbing, if your game's running too many frames, then consider having a frame limit set here. The next part here is CUDA GPUs. We don't really need to worry about this. This will be whatever graphics card that you have. The default will be just your main graphics card. If you have multiple, make sure you choose your more powerful one here. So I'm just going to choose the My3090. Not that you need to do anything with this one here. The next setting here, low latency mode, is something that you need to check for your own system. So let me just do a little bit of explaining here before you choose the next setting. Now, low latency mode is actually really good. If you are one of those people out there with a decent rig and you're running a high refresh rate monitor, I would definitely recommend turning this on. Now, if you do have a NVIDIA G-Sync monitor, you want to have this on Ultra. For me personally, I do have a G-Sync monitor, so I actually have this on Ultra. If you just have a 60 hertz monitor, guys, don't worry about this. Just keep it on off. Next up is maximum frame rate. Now, I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, but to stop any sort of tearing and issues in the menus, I've actually gone ahead and I usually set a frame limit about 200 FPS. Now, you guys can set this to whatever you feel like. You know, if you have like a 244 hertz monitor or 240 hertz, I think they are, 
you can set this to 240 or whatever you feel like so you know if you do have one of those monitors you would set it to 240 but you don't want it going higher than that otherwise you get a lot of stuttering in the menus and other problems Next up, you got monitor technology. You have fixed refresh rate or G-Sync compatible. If you have a G-Sync monitor, make sure you set this to G-Sync, comma, G-Sync compatible. Next up, we have multi-frame sampled AA or MFAA. We're not going to be worrying about here today. However, I did want to point out though, you could try running this setting instead of something like TAA in the game and test this out for yourself. However, you can consider actually turning this on and turning off your anti-aliasing in-game and this will help a little bit with the blurriness and also some of the artifacting that happens really badly with things like FXAA, which is one of the lower settings. So if you haven't tried this out, give it a go yourself and tell me how it goes for your rig. So depending on your setup is whether you will actually need to turn this on or off. For me personally, I actually keep this off. Next up, we have OpenGL Rendering GPU. Don't worry about this so much, but I just put this on whatever GPU that you have. You don't really need to actually select the setting. Next up is Power Management Mode. Now, this one's pretty interesting. If we're going to have a look at the Power Management Mode, we're going to see a few different ones here. We've got Global Setting Normal, and then we have Prefer Maximum Performance. You guys may have other different options here in this dropdown. Let's get into what this actually means. So what this will do is it will change the power plan for your graphics card in your Windows settings. This will mean that your graphics card will draw more power and it will be running at higher clock speeds, but because of this will create more heat. So if you guys are actually, pro, you know, have a stuffy case and your graphics card's choking to death in there, don't turn this on maximum performance. This is a little bit of an issue though. It helps a little bit in game. However, when you're in the menus as well, your graphics card will be running at max speed and max power. So this is a little bit of a problem. If you do turn on NVIDIA Reflex Plus Boost, this basically just automatically turns this on prefer maximum performance anyway so for me personally with a 3090 i actually go ahead and put this on normal but if you're one of those people that are struggling with a cpu bottleneck in your rig what this means is you imagine you have a cpu that is just really struggling to offload to the graphics card what will happen is if you put this on maximum performance the graphics card will be ramped up ready to take the load from the cpu and then pass it back if needed it doesn't have to ramp up the clocks and then ramp down when it's not helping, ramp up when it's helping, ramp down when it's not. So putting this on maximum performance will take a lot of that bottleneck off the CPU and help a little bit. So test this for yourself. Me personally, I keep this on normal. Next up is texture filtering and isotrophic sample. We're gonna go ahead and actually put this on. I did wanna point out though, if you do see a lot of shimmering in the distance or any sort of flickering, you wanna make sure you turn it off. But for now, we're actually gonna be leaving this one on. Next one is texture filtering negative load bias. Now it comes default to allow and we're all gonna also make sure that it stays on allow. We also, all right, so next up for texture filtering quality, we're gonna be putting this one on high performance. It comes defaulted to quality, but basically all this does is allow us to change some of the different settings here. Now we've got texture filtering trilinear optimization. So we're gonna be selecting this on the most optimization. However, if you want your game to look just a smidge better, you can actually leave this off if you're an absolute slut for graphics. Next up is threaded optimization. You're gonna have multiple settings here. You've got auto, off, and on. I would actually recommend turning this off. All this means is that there is a lot of hyper-threading that happens in most engines in most games. You have a certain amount of cores in your CPU, and then you have probably double that in threads. And these threads are used by different engines to get the most out of your performance. And in general, Tarkov just doesn't use hyper-threading the way that it should. I do notice that I get slightly higher frames, but much lower 1% lows. And this is a big issue, meaning I get bigger dips in areas when I'm scoping in and across the board a lot more stutters and jitters. So my average frame times are actually worse and the hitching is much worse when I use hyper-threading. So for this one, I'm actually gonna turn this off. For this next setting, triple buffering, we're gonna go ahead and leave this on off. But however, if you are one of those people that doesn't have a G-Sync monitor, you're sick of the screen tearing and you use a setting called V-Sync, consider turning this on if you do. But however, we're not gonna be using V-Sync here today. So this is staying off. So next up is vertical sync. We are actually gonna be turning this off in the control panel. But you can use this if you need to. Basically, what this will do is a lot of image smoothing. If you're having problems with especially like low frames and you feel like it's tearing quite badly, you can go ahead and put this on fast. But I would actually recommend turning on off. And if you do want to use V-Sync, 
just turning it on in game instead, instead of in here, as turning it on in the control panel adds a little bit of render latency. As for virtual reality pre-rendered frames, don't worry about this one, don't even need to touch it. So once we're done here, guys, what will we need to do is just go down to the bottom right corner here and press apply. All right, before we close up here today, let's go past two more things that you need to know, especially if you're a NVIDIA graphics card user. On the left hand side here, we're going to see display. And then just below display, we have adjust desktop color settings. All right, so once we're here in adjust desktop color settings, we can actually change a few things here without the use of post effects. Now, I don't know if you're aware or not, but post effects actually cost you FPS, anywhere from five to 10 FPS, depending on the settings and how much you use. So if you're struggling for FPS and you still want your game to look really good, you can bump up your gamma here or through your monitor. And you can also use another setting down below here called digital vibrancy. The digital vibrancy will make everything look more vibrant or colorful. And we know Tarkov can be quite undersaturated and very dark and gray. So if you want to make your game just look a tiny bit more pretty and you want to actually keep those 5 to 10 FPS that you lose from post effects, this is a good way to get around it. All right, last but not least, set up G-Sync. Let's have a quick look at this one here on the left hand side. And what we're going to do is apply those changes if we made any. Your screen's going to flash and then we're going to head over towards setup G-Sync. What you need to do in this setting here is if you do have a G-Sync monitor, you want to make sure that you have this one here ticked instead of enable for full screen mode. Make sure you have it enabled for windowed and full screen mode and then click the monitor that will say in brackets if it is G-Sync capable and then you go down to the bottom right corner and then hit apply. It's really that simple. Hey guys, hopefully this video helped you squeeze out the most performance out of your rig. If you guys have any questions about any of the settings or anything we talked about here today, consider jumping in the Discord. We have an amazing Discord full of really good people. If you want to ask me anything at any time, you're more than welcome to join that. The link for that will be featured down below. As always, I do stream on Twitch as well. If you want to come talk to me live while I'm playing Tarkov or just want to ask me anything and hang out in the stream, you're more than welcome to as well. The link for that will also be featured down below. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, feel free to subscribe to the content, like the video, it helps out a lot. And let me know down in the comments if you got any gains out of this video. Hopefully it helped you. For you AMD boys out there, I will be working on a separate video for you guys. So don't think I hate you or I haven't thought about you blokes. Thank you guys so much for watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.